What obviously we won't see the squad till tomorrow, will we? Are there any notable changes? Mm, more or less the same in it as last week. Yeah, I think it's more or less the same as last week. I'm just trying to think. We didn't have any nickels. Yeah, yeah, same squad, same squad, mate. I was just trying to think then if we had a niggle that I'm not, I can't remember, but yeah, no, it's not. Same squad, mate. Is Leroy progressing as you'd like? Yeah, he is slowly. Um, he's moving around a lot more comfortable than what he was anyway. So he is develop, he is progressing, mate. He's just not ready again for this week. So he still might be a couple more weeks yet. We just got to make sure we're doing the right things by Leroy, especially kind of his age and the amount of games that he has played to make sure he gets back and then when he comes back he can stay back and continue. And is there any change in the sort of Jake Connor stance that we were discussing last week? No. But he's still in contention effectively? Yeah, yeah, he's in the squad mate. And have you, did you have any interest and has anyone touched base with you regarding him after what you said last week? Uh, I think there's I think there's been a small a small little bit of interest to be honest um, but what's it nothing that we can do this week obviously he's in our squad we're going to Catalan we're flying tomorrow morning um, there's nothing that we could do this week now and what about the, the 17 that takes to the pitch would you envisage many alterations uh, there might, might be one mate um, they watch call it awful, um, but minimal as as much as we can we've just been trying to get these last three weeks reasonably settled mate really to be fair to just try and get a little bit of consistency we keep talking about consistency but what doesn't help is when you've got to keep changing the team every single week or if you've got to change the team at the end of the year it's like say to get consistency you've got to keep playing with the same kind of people and players to get to know each other's strengths and weaknesses and there was no further action for Andre Sevelio. What's your take on the incident now? You've, I'm assuming you've watched it. Yeah, I, I watched it. I, I think the match review have come to the right conclu conclusion in many ways. Um, I think if you just look at the incident of how he landed, um, then yeah, he's probably landed in a little bit of a dangerous position. But I think if you take all the mitigating factors into it and the fact that he's come running in from about 15 metres in and he's kind of blindsided, well, then there's factors in there which can say that it shouldn't have been dealt with maybe in a red if you like but yeah look it's been been resolved now anyway it's been dealt with so i think the match review have generally been reasonably pretty good this year at kind of having a common sense in and around some of it to be fair so yeah look it's it's one for us where it caught it caught us on that day because obviously we conceded a few tries at the back end but we've got away with in terms of a suspension Given the setbacks he had in, in getting to that point, how has he pulled up after the game? Yeah, good. Yeah, really good. Um, so it would have been devastating for him to, to have a blow um, and not be able to continue kind of with a positive kind of mind frame that he's been able to be up for selection again this week. And obviously, you, you've got a fairly decent record at, at Catalan. What, what do you put that down to and... and how do you sort of keep that going this week? Well, I just think it's about us doing our doing our job and playing to our strengths. And um, we, we speak about it all the time. And we, we enjoy going over there. We like it kind of when it when it's dry and when it's warm, and we can play the kind of football that we want to play when we we go up there. And it's about backing ourselves. And generally, we, we've done that against Callan. So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll focus on just what we do and on the game, and then we'll we'll go from there. And is it warm at the moment? I've not checked. It looks a bit overcast last week when Lee were there, didn't it? So, yeah, but I, I, I presume it's going to warm up. I've been told it's going to warm up at the back end of the week. So, right, uh, people will point to the, the Challenge Cup victory over there as well. I mean, that, a similar result would be a, a huge boost. It goes without saying, wouldn't it? Yeah, mate. Like I've said, I've said many times on here before. It, it's tough. The the league competition's tough, and there's not much between quite a lot of the teams. It, I mean, if you just look at scores then they tell you that there's something in between them. Like our game at Ulkiar at the weekend, if you look at just the scoreboard, it looks like these poles apart between the teams. But if you actually watch the game and with a rugby eye, you can see that there was nothing in between there. I think myself spoke about that on Sky after the game and um, Willie Peters, and, and to you as well, and Willie Peters spoke about exactly the same. And the players felt that as well, yeah, didn't you? In the, yeah. um, especially in the first half of the game, in the first 30 minutes where we were, we were reasonably dominant, weren't we, for large parts. And then, like I say, the simbin happened and that kind of blew our momentum. If social media is anything to go by, there's a fair few Giants fans making the trip this weekend. What, what can you say about that as, a, as an effort? Oh, we, we've always had really good um, support when we've yeah. been to Catalan, haven't we? Some of the away support is outstanding. Mm. Some of the away support that we've had at um, Catalan 
has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, was it, it was like, even the small band that was there in the Challenge Cup were, really good. were, were loud. Um, it's the, the players recognise it and they mention it as well after games, don't they? Every time we've been there in the last couple of years, they might not have been like thousands of them there, but we've always spoke about it in the changing rooms afterwards just how actually loud they were and you can hear them. It is that kind of party atmosphere at Catalan and people enjoy going, so hopefully we can do our job on the field and give them a good trip. The last time you were there, you were riding away, weren't you? I mean, that was probably the high point of the season, and and since then, there's been a, a dip, hasn't there? What, yeah. C- can you put your finger on what what it is, and uh, and is it something that's easily addressed? Oh, the, the, there's only small things. It's not massive things, is it? Yeah. it? It's little bits of kind of detail and being consistent in our performances. And I think at that time there, we were getting the majority of things right. We were getting like ninety percent of the things right and being real consistent with them. And what we did was we've just kind of fell off them, didn't we? For laying ourselves down. Yeah, and we kind of <clears throat> not giving ourselves a chance in games. Really, we're, we're letting the we're giving the opportunity to the other team to take the game out of our hands. What we want to do is do what we did in them games there and control the game on our terms. And we're pretty confident that we can compete and beat most teams if, if we do that. But unfortunately, this year we've up to now we've been inconsistent with that so our job is to get back being consistent with it and obviously you what well, so you've not shied away from addressing the the issue of, of pressure that comes along with all this do you, do you feel there's a bit more of that around given the run at the moment yeah the, the, the always is mate you you, you what one in six now there's always kind of going to be pressure on it's 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 kind of it's it's the only job that probably people like to kind of throw a load of stress and pressure on kind of head coaches where in every walk of life and everywhere else, everyone talks about oh the mental health and um, the well-being of people. But yeah, for coaches, that doesn't seem Just to. Kind of the window, that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem to come into it on on that one. But listen, I, I'm I love working with the guys. I, I love doing what what we're doing. That's the most bit that I take the enjoyment. Out. I don't look at social media. I don't read it. Um, it's for people to express their opinions and say what they want to say on that. But. My job is I want to do the best for the players and support them to try and get a win and hopefully we're all here to do the same thing. So, do, yeah, I, I don't, like I said, I don't buy into it, mate. I just focus on kind of what we do. I know we've got a good group of players here and they're all trying, they're all working out. And as long as they're all committed and working as a team, I'll back it 100%. And if that means that pressure comes on the top there because we're not getting the results, then the pressure comes on top, mate. But it's nothing that I can control that. So there's no point in me worrying about that. That's for other people to make decisions on. Let's just have a quick word with Hilly. What yeah. a milestone that was last week. Can you give yourself credit for, for getting to this point at 550 games? Nah, I think a lot a lot goes down to probably medical staff <laughs> to get me out of the regular. Um, no, it's something I look back on when I finish, when I finish my career. Um, I knew it was coming up. I think it was my dad who gives me the numbers. Uh, as a player, you don't really look yeah. into it, do you? I don't, I don't look into it. But no, it's some achievement, but... I'd have give 549 away for a win last week at Ulkia, so we didn't get it. It was disappointing, um, but we go again this week. These milestones and things like that, I'll, I'll look back on when, when, I, re, when I retire and some of, uh, I can go over with my family, but yeah, it's good. But I took, I took two points over it any day. Apart from the medical staff, is there any secret to your longevity? Just doing the right things. Um, I think kids these days, Coming through, I think some some of them just think they're going to be gifted a career in rugby league. We spoke about it a few yeah. times, don't we? And yeah. when we come and I play with Watto, it's it's sort of changing, and and everyone blames COVID and all this and kids and but now nah, it's the the mentality's changed, I think, and we we've got to sort of change with it to a certain extent, but we've still got to drive the the old standards and. I always said to my lad, and my lad goes circuit training with my missus and that. I said, it, it's things you do when people ain't watching is the key. Train when people don't train. Um, and we had a week off last week and we went Anglesey for a week and me and my wife went and did hills. Um, and kids were stood in windows watching and I said, <laughs> you do things when people are not watching and that gets you where you are. So I'll live by that. Um, I'm getting old, and, but I'm just trying to pass that little bit of... Little bit of information down and hopefully I can help a few of the young guys coming through. You've got to work hard and when you get to the top and I've played international you've got to work even harder to stop there because people are always after your shirt. What an amazing thing. I remember Jamie Peacock saying exactly the same thing, train when people aren't training. He missed his sister's wedding, didn't he, famously, for because he was training. Um, he's on 557. 
Given his position, given his stature, would that be a, a decent one to knock off next? It would. He actually he actually messaged me actually over the weekend. Uh, good good friends with JP, so yeah, it would. Like I say, I don't look at numbers. I think my good mate Mickey Adams on five five four. I think someone someone messaged me. I think he'll be gutted if I overtake him. <laughs> uh, but no, again, we're gonna take it game by game. I just want to get two points in Catalan. Simple as that. We want to get go and get two points over there. Um, We've got a bit of a break next week, obviously with the internationals. We'll we'll carry on training and and then hopefully we can really kick on to the back of the year then. And just on the the, the slump dip, whatever you want to call it, what, can you put your finger from the playing group's point of view and what's quite not happening for you guys at the moment? As Watto said, there's a lot of effort, there's a lot of desire in within our group. Sometimes it may be going in the wrong direction and people going in different directions, but we're, we're all as one. Um, like you said, we Watto gain pressure from here, there and everywhere, but at the end of the day, Watto don't take the field. He doesn't knock on for us, he doesn't give penalties away. So a lot of it's got to do into us players as well. Um, so, no, we're very united as a group. Um, I think we're giving a, we're not helping ourselves if we look at the stats and stuff like that. We're giving them a lot more possession than we should. And end of the day, yeah, we're a fit side, but you can only defend for so long. It's as simple as that. It's, it's just human. We're humans at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah, we've just got to control what we control. Um, and we know we've got a good group here, so it will turn, trust me. Well said, mate. Good luck. Safe trip. I'll pass you over to the other yeah. guys quickly. Hi, what how are you doing? Hi Matt, all good mate. Uh, just a quick one from me, like the league table, if you have a look at it and with your playing Catalans, you win, you're within two, you lose, you can be six points adrift for the playoffs, it's quite a, it's one of those mathematical four pointers on the face of it. Does, is there a bigger importance to win this game given that or is that just some like a narrative that will be played out externally and you won't think about much either positively or negatively. Yeah, well we've not spoke about that, have we? We, we just fo table. Yeah, we're just focused on getting the getting the wins, mate, really, and what helps us do that and how our performances can do that and how we prep to do that. So yeah, we've not really spoke about that. The the it's always funny that the league table is I think it's been tight for the last couple of years now in and around kind of them playoff spots and kind of below that. But I think that's probably kind of the level of the teams that you've got that majority of them teams can beat each other. I think, except regarding probably the top, top, probably two or three teams in the, in the competition who generally more consistently beat everybody else. I think everybody else in the league can actually compete and beat each other on the day. Um, but it comes down to you doing the right things for longer periods of time than them. I think the team that's going to hold it together and be consistent for longer periods of time are the teams that are winning. If you watch the games, that generally kind of comes through in every game that you watch. You watched the Lee game against Catalan last week and it was there. Lee were more consistent than what Catalan were at certain things as well. So it seems to be that way. Hull KR were more consistent than what we were last week in certain areas. Um, so and that's that's how it's kind of looking throughout the league th this year at this moment. So we just need to keep focusing on one game at a time, mate, and trying to make sure that we do our job. You mentioned and, and Hilly did as well about the errors. Uh, I know you yeah. touched on it quite a lot after the game. Um, how do you coach that? Because it's, it's just <laughs> yeah. the things. Yeah. Yeah. We knew that. Be, yeah. Be a genius. The, the, yeah. the things, the, the things that you can't, as as Hilly sort of said, you can't really control that but they are essentially I think we talked about after the game that sequence of mistakes from the, the Harry Rush to knock on and, and yeah. from there on well, I mean that that just had a huge swing on the game didn't it massive because the momentum's massive now I think if you watch watch the first 30 minutes of the game where what we're 6-0 up we've completed 10 out of 10 sets and we're looking good we're looking good we kind of got to the point where we felt that that was going to become our time that last 10 minutes wasn't yeah. it the first yeah. half but then we get a man Simbind on the back end of that and then the momentum, they got one try and it just kind of snowballed into their favour and scoring just after half time kind of broke our back a little bit to be fair. It just takes your kind of energy away. But again, on that, all you can do mate is support people and support players and try and help and them do extras and do little bits because you can, you could put, let's talk about Jake Bibby, you could put him outside there and you could put 10 kicks into the corner for him and he'll catch every single one of them while he's not fatigued. You then put him under fatigue and, and it's kind of trying to replicate that. Is You look at the one he caught after that, the one he caught after was harder than the one that he actually yeah. made the error on. 
but sod's law it kind of caught us on that so yeah other than doing repetition with them and practice them and trying to put them in them situations in training they learn by experience you look at some of probably at some of our players you talked about harry rushton there sam also made a couple of like individual errors at weekend but the young players kind of learn in the game and they'll get better they, they've probably not played what 51st team no, games no. yet i don't think and players generally start learning more about themselves and experience about game situations when they're getting up to about probably 100 games. Yeah. And that starts to show you when they are. If they're going to be consistent, once they get into 100 games, they're, they're going to be generally consistent. You, you look at Hillier, the amount of game he's played, he's probably first 100 wouldn't have been consistent nah, games, nah. would they? But you know now every single week what he's going to do when he turns up and how he's going to perform. But that's because he's learned that over time. So, yeah, we've got a few of them younger players in there. Um, what we've got to do is kind of stick by them and support them to, to be better and get better. And they, and they will as well. Brilliant. Cheers, Water. Cheers, Matt. Thank you, guys. Just a couple for both of you, please. Um, Hi, James. Water, first, I missed miss the start. My laptop had a meltdown, so apologies if you've answered <laughs> this. But Jake Connor, come back into your thinking this week. He's, he's in the squad, mate. He's in the squad. He'll travel to yeah. France with us. There's been some talk about him going to Leeds. I don't know if that's just uh, Thorum talk. Is there anything in that? Yeah, I think there, yeah, there was a little bit of interest um, on that. But like I said, he's in our squad and he's travelling to France with us. Um, so, yeah, n n nothing's happening on that right now, mate. No, are you, are you, are you open to all on at some point? Maybe if, if, he's, that yeah, if he's not playing, mate, he's, he's, a, he's a player who he's needs to play, play and wants to, um, probably wants to play yeah, as well. He so, well. he's, yeah, it's, it's like Matty English. Matty English is a guy who's a great guy, isn't he? Great. Um, really good to have around the group. and He wants to play every single week, but at the moment, some of our middles are playing and they're performing more consistently. Um, so Matty's gone out to get some game time so that when he comes back, he's actually ready because Super League players, what you don't want them to do is be sat here for months on end and not playing because when they, f they first have to come back in, they're going to have to find the feet again, yeah, aren't they? Tough. Yeah, so... Yeah, it, it, if it continues, then it's obviously things that we need to kind of look at. But yeah, at this moment in time, it, it's too late in the day to be looking at anything like that. He's travelling to France with us tomorrow morning. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. What does he have to do to get back into your team? Just do what he's, he's been doing, but keep his head down, keep working hard, keep um, getting the respect of everybody by how hard he works and how he's responded in terms of coming out of the team, to be fair, and doing it, doing it the right way, doing it as anybody else would have to do, really. Chris, I'm just a couple yeah. for you, Chris. I, yeah. We spoke during the Tonga series last year and you said you'd never retire from England duty. Have you put your hand up for next week? <laughs> next week, I think he's going to go with a few younger boys. I think he's a good, got a good selection of a few younger boys. Um, I think it's time to start breading a few younger lads in. But like I say, I've never, I'll never step down from international if there was a flu in the camp or something like that. I'll come and step up. But I don't think there will be. There's a lot of young lads now. Um, he needs to breathe through looking at the next World Cup. Um, and I'm sure that's what he'll do next week. Do you think that's it for you then, or do you think the door's still open for end of year in Samoa? Oh, like I said, I'll never say never. Um, but there is a lot of young lads now, especially at prop position. Um, I think you can start really bringing through. And you've got to play in. Yeah, French is going to be a test, but he's got to be needing them to play consistent against your likes of Samoa, leading into a World Cup. You know what I mean? You can't just drop them in there um, and hope for the best. It's a, it's a tough environment, um, it's a World Cup and obviously being away and stuff like that. They've got to get used to that camp life before they do the World Cup, so no, I should imagine he'll, he'll bred a few young boys over the, over the, uh, the internationals.